What up? What up, y'all? It is nine o'clock. Really, it's nine o two, but let's say it's nine o'clock because that's when we're <laughs> supposed to start. Uh, no one's really checking, right? But uh, what's good, y'all? So welcome to our episode. It's Ian and Matt Kowski and Matt, you boys, uh, talking about life this week. Talking about life, happiness, you know, meditation. Honestly, whatever. We're kind of just uh, you know riffing it this week. Um, you know, if you want to listen, that's awesome. If you feel like you know maybe you want to come up and you know, join the conversation, feel free to request. And uh, maybe we'll get you up here if you have cool stuff to say. Maybe we'll let you talk. If not, maybe we'll fucking mute you, kick you out. I don't, I don't know. You know, be respectful. Have some cool shit to say. Uh, Matt, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Uh, just just packing it in after a long day. Um, it's been good, though. Everything's been good. Good. Good to hear it. So uh, right now on a lot of people's minds uh, on Twitter that I'm connected to here and in the crypto space, which you're somewhat connected to, but not as much. But uh, so there was an exchange like uh, a crypto exchange called and I'm not the expert either here. So, you know, if I'm wrong, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm loosely right. Let's Google it. But uh, I'm mostly right. Anyway, there's a crypto exchange like FTX and some horrible shit happened where, you know, they lent out too much money or they over leveraged and, you know, some shit with Binance. And now Binance, maybe they're buying them out. Maybe they're not like some people think it was like a corporate hit and they took them out on purpose or Honestly, bro, I don't have all the details, right? But why I bring this up at all is because the effect it's having is people are down bad, bro. People who had their money in this exchange, um, it, it looks like, you know, I don't know what's going to ultimately happen, but it looks like either, you know, they're, it got nuked, right? Like everything that they had in there, if they even can get it out, is significantly reduced, right? By like, you know, 20, 30, 50, who even knows how much percent, right? I don't have any. I'm not totally into it. I just know people, you know, what they're saying. Um and some people are saying they won't even be able to get their money out, like what they even do have in there. Uh, so, bro, that's horrible, right? Like, you know, imagine like, you know, you really believed in crypto. You thought this was a decent exchange. You heard good things about it. You know, it's not some like back market thing. It's, you know, the people at the highest levels are kind of corrupt, doing things you didn't think they would do. You thought maybe there was laws against it or whatever the fuck you thought. And now all of your money's gone, right? Like, you know, and you, you, I always say you should never invest more than you could stand to lose, Right. So if you follow that rule, uh, you'd be fine, you know? So that's why I always say, you know, you don't got to listen to everything I say, but if you're not doing as well as me, you probably should listen to most of what I say or some of it or the stuff that's working for me, right? So, you know, not to, you know, not to be callous or whatever, but actually with the most empathy, this is how you prevent that shit next time is you don't invest more than you can stand to lose. Uh, however, you know, I am empathetic, you know, to the current situation. So that's for next time. But what do you do now? Um, you know, before I get into that, Matt, what do you, what do you think, and what would you do? Uh, I would probably throw in a if you, I mean, if you have money that you're investing and you're down bad, um, I would probably throw my money in that Powerball. Well, actually, no, it's over now. Never mind. Um, I don't know. I feel like. Wait, that was a joke, right? Yeah, there was a Powerball recently. It's over now. No, I'm saying you wouldn't really play. Pa- like you just lost forty thousand dollars. You would just go play Powerball. Yeah, why not? Ooh. Jesus it's Christ. Like, I mean, what's another five bucks, you know I guess, I mean? right? It's kind of like the same thing as like if you're late to work, you're already late. So what's the difference of being five minutes late and 30 minutes late? You're already late. It's already past the time. See, that's correct. Sort of, right? Because like if you're going to have to take the whole day off, but if you're 30 minutes late, then you have to use 30 minutes of, you know, sick time instead of five. So sure. you're definitely losing more. Now, the now the Powerball... I think it's funny. I mean, that's obviously not my, that's not where I was going with it, but I mean, that's not the worst idea. Yeah. I mean, five more bucks. Sure. Um, yeah. What if you get yourself but, out of the okay, gym? Okay. So you What's play the way? Powerball, then what? Well, you'd have to. No, no, I get it. But let's say you play the Powerball, you, you spend the extra five, that doesn't hit because it's not going to be for most people. What do we tell the people here, bro? What do you tell the listeners? What advice do we got for these folks? Oh, I mean. I don't know. Wait, you're, cut, you're cutting out. Start over. Sorry. Oh, I was saying, you're cutting you know, out crazy. Say it one more time. Oh, um, I was just saying, like, maybe you could check your 401k. See, see what you got in there. Maybe you could borrow against it. Get yourself back up on some money. Right. So that's, so that's more kind of right. So that's not a bad idea. So, you know, things you want to do is increase your financial awareness. Right. So if you're down bad, you kind of want to think, you know, what is your next immediate financial expenditure that you're going to need? Do you have enough to cover it? Do you have enough credit to cover it? 
Um, yeah, could you could you borrow from somewhere else? Can you look into your 401k? Can you talk to your financial advisor? Is there a way to get the money back? Is there a way to, you know, somehow financially make ends meet, right? And if there's not, I'm so sorry. I don't know what is going to happen to those people. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to help the people that I can help. And I know I can't help everybody, but maybe some of these things can help some of these people. Now, you know, so your, you know, your first thing is like, how do you get the money back? And I think that's everybody's kind of gut go-to reaction, right? Is, okay, I lost all this money. I got to get it back. I would say, you know, and, and everyone's dip, but I would say, don't think like that. Don't think about getting it back at all right away or at all. Because uh, that's kind of what pulls people into this like negative downward spiral where now they're like, oh, I got to get the money back. So now I got to get, I got to bet double. Oh, I lost 40,000. Oh, oh, I only I have 40,000 left. That was half my money. Now I got to bet the other 40,000 to make the other 40 back and I'll be whole again. And then you lose the other 40 or 20 or whatever. So I would focus not on that. Right. I would focus on, you know, put out all the immediate fires, handle all the emergencies, cover what you got to cover, like right away. Right. Um, but then how do you mentally handle it? Right. What what would you do on that end for you? Ah, oh, man, it'd be tough for me because I feel like I'd have to give up a lot of things, like things that are costing me money that don't necessarily need to be costing me money so that I would feel better about my weeks. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I think when I'm down bad like that financially, I got to cut back on some things. So it makes me feel a little bit better. But it's tough because it's kind of like a double edged sword. If I'm cutting back on things and I'm not doing things that are fully making me happy but I may not have a choice and to have the happiness later, I may need to sacrifice some of that now. You know what I mean? Dude, a hundred percent. So again, I think that's smart, right? So that's, that's kind of on the first step though, right? Of like put out all the fires, see what financially you can and can't handle. Now I'm saying, you know, once you've kind of, and you know, this may not be so quick, but either once you've reached acceptance or once you've hit a point where it's like, okay, there's nothing else to do on that front at this moment. Bro, you're really good at this, right? What do you do to keep happy? You keep uh, you keep active, right? You keep physically active, which is something I always, you know, envy you for that, you know, I have all this energy to talk and intellectualize and blah, blah, blah. And you have that. You're on the podcast with me. But then you also have all this other energy to, like, fucking go to the gym and shit, you know? Um, how does that make you feel? I mean, yeah, you always have to go to the gym. And even if you can't, like, you kind of going back to – what I was saying before, if you have to cut back and let's say like, I mean, I don't know, you know, gym membership isn't really putting a hole in your pocket that bad, but if you're down this bad, like we're talking about in this scenario, you may even have to cut back on your gym membership so you can save some money every month. Um, but if right. You, but you, it's not you, about the membership, right? It's about the working out. Right. So what I'm saying is even if you don't have a membership, there's still ways of working out. Like you can still, sometimes I just go to an open field and I just start running. And you can do that. And that's a workout. And that'll make How much good. do they charge you to be on the field? Zero. Really? Depending on, what, de depending on what field you go to. I mean, there are some fields that people just don't use and you can just run around in them, just open fields. Now, do you think most people have access to this? Like some sort of just either open field or open area or open longer stretch of road or anything that they could just run on? I would imagine so. I mean, I live in New York and it's pretty cramped up over here. But at the same time, there's definitely fields that you can run around in, whether you're in the city, on Long Island, Staten Island, wherever. So I agree with you 100 percent. And that's what I'm getting at. Right. Is, you know, when you lose all this money, you know, and even our first answers, right. Our first thoughts were financial. And it was even like, how do we break away from focusing on that? But that's my advice. Right. Is kind of come to a quick acceptance that in this moment, you know, there's not so much you can do. There's little to nothing you could do in this exact moment about the money lost. Um, but what you can do is control your attitude, right? And it's tough, bro. It's the toughest and the most tragic and trying of circumstances to like, you know, walk the walk of the talk you talk, right? But I say, hey, bro, even if 99% of your life is shit, focus on the 1% that's positive. And if you focus 100% on 1%, that 1% will become 100% of your experience, you know? And again, easier said than done. But, you know, some people aren't even trying. Some people don't even know, okay, easier said than done, but people have never even heard it said, and people sometimes hear it said and think it's so corny, it's not worth trying to do. So I just kind of want to put out this message, right, that like it is, it is worth trying to do. So here's, here's a little um, 
personal anecdote, right? So I was unemployed. Uh, I don't know, bro. I'm horrible with time. Five years, 10 years back, whenever it was. And, bro, I was depressed. I was, like, suicidal. Like, you know, I was, like, just in a bad spot. Um, and I needed some way to move forward. And I kept, you know, and I, bro, I was doing it. Like, I wasn't just sitting there twiddling my thumbs. I was, you know, applying a 20, 30, whatever, 100, like, probably 20 job in well, probably 20 jobs a day on, you know, Monster Indeed, like, going to different sites, doing all this shit, bro. I was trying. It wasn't working out. Or I would get offers and it would just be like, no, this is like horrible. Like I'll stay on the unemployment or, you know what, like, or, or it wasn't a real offer. I forget whatever happened or, you know, what, bro, it wasn't working out. I honestly forget the details a while back. And I thought I need something to make me move forward that thinks about something else. So I started this thing where I decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get more active because that, that's, that's like, if you're depressed, I, I bet you some money that, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people that are feeling not great, they don't exercise. They don't exercise at all. They have no activity in their life. I'm sometimes guilty of this. So, you know, if you're feeling that, I can relate. Uh, but what I decided is, bro, I could just walk. I don't want to sign up for a gym membership. I'm unemployed. I don't have this money. I said, I'm going to walk a mile every day. And I started that for a little bit. And I realized, OK, you know what? Like, I think I I think I already, you know, I was uh, checking it on my Apple Watch. Or checked, I'm like. I already walk a mile every day, mostly. That's not really much of a challenge, right? So it's like, okay, then I got to walk an extra mile. I got to walk a dedicated mile a day. Then I was doing that. Then I got to this point where I was like, you know what? Here's, here's, here's where my flow is. Here's where my vibe is. I'm going to walk a total. The regular walking I do plus the additional walking has to add up to five miles and above 10,000 steps every single day. And, bro, I did that for like a year, uh, a year and a half like straight into the pandemic. I don't do it anymore, which I thought about getting back to it. I don't know. Sometimes when I lose my flow, it's hard to get back. Not saying that's what you should do, but just being honest. Um, but, but anyway, bro, the point is I did that for a year and a half. And within the first several months in, I, I found a job like, and bro, is it because I was happier? Is it because things were going better? Is it because I was like walking and more active? Can I prove that? No, I can't prove that. But what I bet money that, me deciding to like get physically active during a state of unemployment rather than just sit there and bitch and feel bad for myself. Like, can I say that that's like the positivity that showed up in the interview, the, you know, the hormones, the pheromones, the pump in my blood, the rosiness in my cheeks, whatever the fuck it was. Can I say, you know, opinionally, can I say confidently that I believe that that's what did it? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Cause there was nothing else different. Yeah. I hear that. I mean, I also think that sometimes it's, um, it's good to practice changing your behaviors. So like for me, um, when I was in school and I was trying to, you know, better my situation and make sure that I was focused in school, I, uh, I went to Instagram a lot. So one of the things that I did as like a, a general practice was where the Instagram app was. I was studying programming at the time and where the Instagram app was in terms of location regarding where my thumb would click on my phone I deleted Instagram from there and I replaced it with an app that taught me how to program and like gave me quizzes every day so that I could take those questions. And every time my brain wanted to go to Instagram, my thumb would immediately click that spot and it opened up the coding app. So I would start reading code and I would start like quizzing myself on code or, or whatever it is, you know, substitute that with whatever you need to do in your life. Um, so I think sometimes you can take your regular behaviors and you can manipulate them so that you're practicing better behaviors instead of the regular ones, which is just scrolling through Instagram, going through people's stories, um, something that's maybe a little less productive, if that makes sense. Bro, 100%. Uh, this, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, at one point during, you know, and I say during the pandemic, like we're out of it, who fucking knows what's going on? It's Ukraine now. Uh, and You know, whatever. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, the pandemic will come back in the winter. Who knows? But... Um, yeah. So I was like arguing on Facebook. Like that's where I was like taking out all my like extra energy and angst and you know, whatever about the world. And, uh, one day, bro, like I got in an argument with like someone who was actually a friend and I felt like, fuck, like I'm just trying to argue with strangers. I'm not trying to like worsen relationships with people I already had good ones with. And like, fuck, now I did that over like, you know, this shit that was like, just this, like, I don't know, maybe semi-toxic, but who was like kind of hurting, you know, and just arguing with strangers, but then it did right. become toxic. Then it seeped into my life. And that person was like, yo, maybe you should get off Facebook for a while. And I honestly, bro, I, I 
was like so like upset. I was so addicted to Facebook, but I was so upset about the situation. Bro, I, I put it on the last page of my shit. And that for me, bro, it was another major step of moving forward. Because what I didn't realize is what I thought was like this outlet of this energy. No, bro, that was becoming this focus. It was making me feel negative. It was making me more argumentative in public. I thought it was this separate thing. Like, okay, I'll argue on here. I'll get it all out. Then I'll be better, you know, the rest of the time. No, I just argued more the rest of the time. Yeah, no, I hear that. And honestly, I, I deleted my personal Instagram a couple of years back. And it was one of the better things that I did with my life. Because people, you know, they'll ask me, do you have an Instagram? And now I do, but it's more for my creative side of what I do. Um, but they asked me, you know, how do you, how do you live? And I'm like, honestly, better <laughs> uh, because I don't have it. Um, is, you know, I think people say this all the time. Instagram's just like a highlight reel. Same thing with something like LinkedIn. You know, people don't, people don't talk about how they interviewed over a hundred thousand times. They just share with you the one post that says like, Hey, I got a job here. And they look all successful in their pictures and no one sees them like crying behind closed doors. Like when they got turned down for a bunch of things and they just get a bunch of automated emails that says, Hey, you know, thanks for reaching out to us, but uh, we are going to go with some other candidates instead. We appreciate that you took the time to, you know, take a look into our company or whatever. Um, so nobody sees those things. And same thing with Instagram. Like, we don't see the pimples on your face because you're thanks, not Thanks for us. reaching out, insert your name here. Right, exactly. So Insert name of rejected applicant here. Sorry, go ahead. No, for real. So same thing with, like, an Instagram or a Facebook or, you know, we just see what you want us to see and that's the problem with social media is it's all just this big mask that everybody puts on nobody actually shows their true selves and some people make you think that they're showing their true selves like some people are like yeah today was like a really bad day you know we all have bad days sometimes but that's just your social media persona showing trying to show people that you're a real person and it's probably true but it just comes off as an act because you're doing it on this big stage for everybody to see because you need them to know that you're a regular person too. But it just comes off as so disingenuine. So the, the point of- Have you make, ever seen it be genuine or you think it's across the board? Uh, I think it's pretty across the board. It's very, it's so weird to me that you could be sitting next to somebody and you could just say something to somebody, but you need to go to your phone and you need to tell the world. You know what I mean? I feel like it would be more genuine if you either said it to yourself or if you just showed it through your actions and people saw you at your job and you were having a really bad day and you didn't even mean to show it, but you can't help it. It's just written on you. And it's so genuine because you left your house in the morning and you got into a fight with your spouse or your child or... Um, you got some bad news that somebody was really, really sick and you just can't hide those things instead of, oh man, I just got this really, really bad news. I should let everybody know that I'm a regular person because I had something like that happen to me today. That to me is just so weird that people do that stuff. And I'm very happy that I got away from Instagram because I, or just social media for the most part in general. I mean, you know, I still have my LinkedIn. I still have my you know, professional ones. I use Instagram um, kind of professionally. I would like to use it more professionally, but I'm trying to, you know, use it as like a creative outlet rather than an outlet of people seeing me and judging me based on what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't need anyone to know those things. Um, now, I'd hold rather... up. Before you keep going, I just feel I have to make a confession. I am that person. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll definitely, you know, dive in. But I'm the person that definitely lets people know when I'm having a rough day, right? Right. So I don't feel like I match your description, right? And, and you know, maybe you'll flip me. Maybe you'll convince me, oh, shit, I really am doing what you're saying. Um, what I'm hearing from what you're saying, though, is that you would never do it and it would never be genuine if you did it. That's why I would think you can't see it that way or relate to it that way. That, plus I think you're 90 plus percent right, um, I think the vast majority of people are completely fitting your description. What I would challenge is, you know, and maybe I'm wrong, bro. Maybe I'm subconsciously just doing it to bitch or attend, whatever you think, right? Like, so we let's get to the bottom of it. But 
I think I'm doing it to let others know they're not alone. And because nobody gives a fuck at my job, like those aren't my friends. And that's like, that's what's funny too. So I, I made a post today, actually, just letting people know, like, like, I don't know, bro. I, I just felt lonely today. It felt like a weird, whatever day. And I just had this feeling of like, it's so weird because in my real life, you know, in my day to day life, I don't feel connected to people and Twitter, it actually is the only place that I do. Um, and I'm always posting positive shit on Twitter. So when I post something negative for me, it's not like, Oh, poor me. Oh, woe is me. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think there's none of that in there. Right. Some of it's expression and just getting it out there. But for me, part of it is like, yo, I'm out here too. And if you're feeling this and you're not someone who posts as positive shit as me every day, just know somebody who, you know, maybe I'm the one who gives you inspiration. Just know that I don't have a perfect life. Like, you know, so yes, bro, if there is a performative aspect to it, like, look, hey, I'm a real person, but it's not just for me. It's like, it's for the other people too, because bro, I need that. Like, sometimes I need that. Sometimes I need to see a post from somebody who I think is perfect saying like, yo, like today wasn't perfect. And I'm like, oh, so like nobody's perfect. Like, what about that? I guess I see where you're coming from. It just, it seems like a weird ritual to me. But bro, hold and on. And, I, and to I... clarify, I'm like the five to 6% of people that are genuinely doing this. Bro, I do agree. I think most people are out there performance, largely 100%. I happen to be a, you know me, bro, in person. People right. on the space will get to know me, but I'm super vulnerable. No one's 100% transparent, but I've got, much less that I feel ashamed, embarrassed about that I have to hide. I've, I've little than nothing that I feel like I can't say it to you and say, yeah, I don't agree with what I did. I feel bad about it, but I did this and I could say. It. Yeah, no, I hear you. And I appreciate you coming from this angle. Um, for me, it, whenever I see it, I just, I, you know, and I guess my question for you is, does it satisfy the part inside you that you were looking to have satisfied when you do these things. Funny you asked that, bro. So, and this is, it's like funny, bro, because this is like, it, you didn't even, I don't even think you saw this. I'm the, I know you actually didn't. Um, I didn't, because I haven't I know. looked at social media all day. That's what I'm saying. I know you didn't. Um, and it's funny because like, it just kind of naturally gravitated here. Maybe I pulled it here, whatever, subconsciously. Um, but yo, so on Facebook, I didn't, right? Because... On Facebook, I was just connected to the basically all the people I already knew. So it kind of was what you say. Like, you know, I was going to work, having a shitty day, whatever, not feeling good, kind of keeping it to myself at work rather than confiding in someone, blah, blah, blah. And then I go home, but on Facebook, then I, then I put it all out there to the same people, basically, that I just saw. And then, like, yeah, I guess my family and this and that. And then, you know, then you get messages from, like, your aunt. And your aunt's like, are you okay, sweetheart? And you're like, and that. It's like, no, like, what the, like, I didn't want this. This is not the type of attention that I wanted. Like, what the fuck did I put this post out here for, right? Right. I mean, I get where you're coming. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Well, hold I on, hold on. Those... So that's, yeah, that's sure. A, right? Okay. But then, right. then you said, you know, do I get what I'm looking for? Bro, today I did. And, you know, someone commented this to me on what I posted about kind of feeling alone. Uh, Cause I said, yo, I feel alone. And this dude, this was literally my comment, the conversation we're having. It's like, I feel alone in real life, but it's like Twitter that keeps me going. And I wish I kind of had that feeling of connection and community that I have on Twitter in my real life. And this other guy that I had met in person that I met from Twitter, then we met in you know real life because of an event through NFTs and Twitter and all this shit. He's like, bro, like I may not live next to you, but like, bro, like we, we go ac across the world sometimes to see each other at these events. And like, when we talk online, when we talk in these spaces, like we see each other in person, he goes, bro, I'm your friend. He goes, I'm your real friend, bro. Like he goes, I consider you, I, and I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, I consider you my real friend. Like, you know, so he's like, you just got to shift the perspective for some people that, you know, Twitter is a little bit different, bro. This whole NFT thing, this whole new social media that we're on, because I'm not connecting with my aunt and my grandma and my, like my family and my people at work, bro. I'm connecting with other people who bought something that, you know, I was attracted to. And, you know, 10,000, 5,000, whatever, thousands of people other bought this thing. Well, why'd they buy that instead of something else? Why'd they buy into this community? You know, a lot of the time, not for every person, but a lot of the time, it is a phenomenal filter, bro. It is a way to get to, like, other people who have similar values as you, bro. Like, you know, I'm into the Gary Vee, Vee friend shit. You know, not every NFT has such a strong community, but the ones that do have really strong ones. So the Gary V, you know, NFT community, bro, they're all about positivity. And, like, again, some people are about the money. Not everyone's anything in any community. But overwhelmingly, bro, your odds are so much higher that you're going to meet someone you actually can connect with. 
so when I made this status today that I was like, yo, like I feel alone in real life, but like y'all, y'all out here on Twitter, y'all are my real family. And then like several people who like, you know, I don't know. I wasn't thinking about them that second or that day. Like I just, bro, I felt alone. I wasn't thinking about anybody. It's not like, you know, I discounted my friends or like, but it just felt alone in that moment. And I, you know, I expressed it. And then I have all these people that I'm like, oh yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. Oh yeah. We had this. And I'm like, well, this is my point. Like, ah, fuck. Like, why can't we go get a beer like nachos right now? And it's just like, yeah, like maybe that's, you know, this thing that I'm feeling, but I think I'm overreacting to it, bro. Because yeah, I did get what I was looking for on Twitter. I did get that reminder today. I did get that like, like, bro, you do have another community. You do have another family out here. So that's what I think the difference is, bro. And not everyone uses these apps the same way. Some people are on Twitter connected to the same people on Facebook. But for me, it's like, I actually built a different community. I actually built a community on Twitter where, or joined a community or whatever on Twitter. Whereas Facebook, I just kind of reflected the one I was already part of. And no, no, like echoing, screaming into my own echo chamber of reflect self-reflection. No, that doesn't do shit for me. But joining a community, like that's my point, bro, is that like you're 100% right, but that technology and Twitter and social media, it's this double-edged sword. And most people are cutting themselves with it, bro. But I'm slicing through the fucking jungles with my machete out here. That's what I think. I mean, you know, what? what like obviously you came in with the opposite perspective. Am I swaying you? Like, what do you think? I hear where you're coming from. And I think that's, respectable the way that you're using it you know like you're not just talking to the same people that you went to high school with or that are just in your life on a day-to-day basis but I still for me and this is just a personal thing I still think it's just such a weird ritual to then go and tell people on such a huge platform about like what your day was about you know like if you want to like positively uplift people I think that's okay um and i guess doing a reality check every once in a while is okay but for me like i just would prefer not to because whenever i personally see it happen it just comes off as you know i'm i'm looking to get more followers i'm looking to get more connections and like in your case i see what you're saying you're building a community you're trying to get more people around you and it, and it does satisfy this thing inside you where if you are having a bad day, you have a community that you can run to and go to. Um, I just like personally can't see myself doing it because whenever I see people doing it, and I think maybe you hit it on the head with like the 95% or whatever that are doing this, it just seems so disingenuous. And it seems almost like they're trying to be so perfect that they're trying to show their imperfections, if that makes sense. So basically what I'm saying is there's like, 10 days in a row where there's a solid post and it's like a solid workout. Wait, bro. Like, dude, I, dude, I agree with you. Like you could explain, I don't mean to cut you off. But I just, you don't have to explain. I'm not trying to sell you that you should do it, but I think I have sold you on the fact that me and some other people, like it is an option. Like, do you, would you like, you know what I mean? Like, and if not, tell me why not. Not an option for you, but that some people, you could do it that way. And it could work that way. I get good. In my opinion. Like, you know though, what I mean? Like, bro, I, I reached out like this. Some people, some people messaged me saying, bro, if you ever want to talk to someone on the phone, I don't mind. Give me a call. I didn't know I could give those people a call. I didn't have their phone number. That, you know what I mean? How would I have gotten that otherwise? That is what I'm looking for. For sure. I, mean, I just still think it's a very weird ritual to go out on social media and start talking about your life. And everything well, it's not a happened. ritual. It's like a one day thing. Right. But how often so you don't do you even know? believe when I'm doing it. So even when I'm doing it, you're still thinking the same thing? A little bit, yeah. Don't be afraid, bro. Tear me apart. Tell, tell it to me. Criticize me. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's just like, uh, I, especially because I'm so disengaged from it and I'm so disattached or detached from it. Um, it just, to me, it feels like you need something that you're just not getting in real life so you're turning to your virtual life about it you right I mean? but what but that's the question and I guess what if like my, my what if my, my virtual life is my well, well my biggest question is like is it still considered being a person if it becomes so digital why not because you're relying on something totally not like a person 
You use it's a very toilet? Rob- I mean, sure. Why? It's not a person. It's not nature. You know what I mean? Like, I, we don't have to go that deep into it. But, like, you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. Um, I'm sure there's bigger reasons besides this conversation. Like, bro, I'm really not talking to an AI. I'm, I'm using this to connect to people. Bro, right. and just, again, don't, like, I agree with you 99%, but I'm saying there is a small population of people, maybe even growing, that do use uh, social media for the right reasons. I just want you to hone in. Like, you seem to think that's impossible. I, Bro, I largely, largely agree with you. 99% of people are doing what you're saying. Why don't you believe 1% of people could do it differently? That's what I want to get to the root of. I guess I agree. I mean, Because, bro, this is the flip. This is what I'm trying to explain, and this is what the other guy said to me. It's a mental shift to realize, no, this is your real life. Like, this is my real friends. Like, this is my real community. The shit that's, quote, unquote, in my real life day to day, I don't really have community or connections there. So that's kind of more the fake one. And you're you're saying, oh, but you're using a tool to connect. Bro, we're humans. Everything we do is built on tools. Like, I'll, I'll take all the points. You know, like, if you still feel the way you feel, come up with a better point. But, I, bro, I can't accept that point because – what are we doing right now? We're using Twitter to have a podcast so me and you could talk because, you know, it's easier to do that than have you drive over here and then drive back home. And, like, if you had to do that every single time we wanted to have a conversation, you might do it less. And, bro, even then, it's a car. Then it's like, oh, you're using technology. Are cars, you know, the right way to connect and talk to people? Like, you know, see what I'm saying? So if you still have the point, I'm with it. But you got to come up with a stronger point because, you know what I mean? You can't use a point that you don't follow through all the way and you use technology to connect. So why not this way? Got it. All right. You got it then. I'm going to leave you with that. You got that point. What? Are you just, I feel like you're just defaulting. So you think I've sold you. That's all I got to say. Sure. No, come on. Don't clam up, bro. You're on a podcast here. You're the co-host. You got to – come on. Tell me here. No, you're all good, man. You killed me. <laughs> come on, bro. Come on. Don't do this to me. What, what do you think's not genuine about it? I don't know. That's all I got, dude. Fine, fine. Um, okay, so – so that's one thing you could do. You could you could reach out, build a strong community through Twitter. So going down this same vein, right? You know, maybe maybe this will juice you up. Um, I think you could also curate your social media feeds, and this is something that I do that I find almost nobody does. Um, is like stop following shit that's negative. Like you could you could mute people, bro. You don't even have to let them know you unfollow them. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You could mute all the posts that you don't like. And like, you know, only like and comment on shit you do and the algorithm will learn, bro. And only, you know, only give you positive tools. Like, what do you think about that? I agree with that. It's a good practice. I mean, I guess going back into your point, right? Just because, I don't know, I made you quiet here and I apologize. But uh, like, I get your point, bro. I don't want to come across too strong here. Like, I, I saw somebody make a post and it's funny because I even made a post reacting to it. It's like a joke. But I saw this post about, you know, someone, I guess, religious or whatever. And it was talking about, you know, Jesus was tested in this way and that way and blah, blah, blah. And I respect that, bro. I respect the feeling. I respect the idea. I respect the sentiment. But the post was like five, six, seven different videos of this woman crying. And like, to me, that's where what you're saying screams across to me. Because it's like, it's one thing to talk about how you feel. It's one point. To, to get on a live video and you're talking about something emotional or you're making a video and you cry in the middle of it. Why, why did you record? Like you got to like, and she's not even holding the camera, bro. Like it's like, she has a camera set up so that she could do something in front of the camera and just get all the days she's crying. That is when I'm like, what is this? Like, I get that you're hurting. I'm sorry, but like, it's that, that, that is where I get it. That's where I get your point about the ritual. It's very strange to me. Like, yeah, I get it. Jesus was tested this and that, but how many times did Jesus set up a camera and record himself crying? Like, I don't know that, that, that one kind of like, you know, and I guess that's what I look like. <laughs> that's what I must look like to you, which is why you don't want to say it. Cause you're afraid to offend me, whatever. But I, I get that side of it. Yeah. So another way, uh, you know, I manage emotion to shit is meditation. What do you think about that? 
Um, yeah, I think there's different kinds of meditation. Um, you good, brother? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. Do you need to make a post on social media letting the world know? If not, you yeah. can tell me. Yeah, probably, dude. Um, so I think, I, think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna cut it short tonight. I get it, bro. I was kind of I, I was thinking you might. All right, bro. See you. Everything's good. Yeah. All right, bro. To the listeners, send thoughts and prayers to Matt. If you listen to the last episode, he doesn't believe in them, but send them to him anyway. Maybe, maybe I don't. Who knows? He will uplift Matt. We'll uplift the world. Uh, everyone's down bad. We're just trying to put some positivity out, give you a way to fight, feel happy, um, use social media or don't to connect, connect with people in real life or however you connect with them. And, uh, you know, you are loved. Again, the universe is full of love. The universe is made of love. And uh, you and that universe are made of the fa- same fabric of the, uh, you know, the cosmos and the stars. And it's all love and you are loved. And uh, if you need anything, I'm definitely someone you could reach out to. So feel free to DM me or whatever you want to do and reach out. And uh, that's all we got. Matt, you got any last mic drops? No, I'm good. Peace. Peace out.